Hello and welcome to New Mexico Day Trips. I'm Shelley Carney. And I'm Toby Yunus. Today we're on our way to the Jemez Pueblo. We're going first to the Welcome Center. Then we'll be going to what? Walatoa? Well, uh, so Walatoa is the Welcome Center on Jemez, on the oh, tribal okay. lands. And that's separate from the uh, historical site. The historical site. Uh, the historical site has uh, ruins of a village uh, that was centered around a church. So we'll go there and check that out. And they have a welcome visitor center there as well. So we'll go through that. And then uh, what comes after that? Then after that, we're going to go uh, gold prospecting up in the Jemez someplace. And uh, you'll see the results of that if you go to our garage prospecting channel. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's not that far from where we live, about 30 miles to get to the first place that we're going. So uh, we have a little bit of a later start today, um, but uh, really nice weather, warm, sunny, and dry, uh, although we heard there was flooding uh, up where we're going. Well, the flooding is the result of the massive, uh, this year's big snowpack. So, uh, yeah, they, they have experienced it. I couldn't, get, uh, I couldn't get in touch with the forest ranger's office up there. I left several voicemails, but they didn't call me back because I noticed that some of the picnic areas near the water were closed, and they only close them when they're having flooding. Uh, so, but that's, from a gold prospector's perspective, that's good because flooding always brings more gold down from the... Uh, mountains. Mountains, yeah. Uh, so it should be a really beautiful area for us today. They have a combination of red rocks and some evergreens, so uh, some pretty colors. And, uh -huh. uh, blue skies, of course, today with some very varied uh, stratus clouds. Uh -huh. Just filmy, I like how filmy clouds. Yeah, thin, and wispy. Wispy, yeah. Looking forward to the variety of things that we're going to get to see today. Yeah, we're going to see a lot. There's a lot going on up here. All right. So we'll uh, check back in when we get to our first stop, the Welcome Center. All right, well, we made it to the Walatoa Visitor Center, and we're gonna go inside and find out more about the place. And we see some flags flying that say coffee, gift shop, and Red Rock Trails. Across the street, they have uh, permanent vendor booths set up. I guess that people from the Pueblo can sign up to sell things out of these booths on particular days if they want. This is the first Sunday in May, so, um, the ruins where we're going to go later they offer new mexico residents the opportunity to get free admission with uh, their new mexico id on the first sunday of the month so that's why we picked sunday to come out um, there seems to be somebody at this vendor spot across the street but not at the other one so probably not the biggest day to have uh, your shops set up but as we came into the uh, pueblo onto the reservation land and through uh, Jemez and Walatoa, we did see some signs for people pointing to their homes uh, that they were selling pottery and they were, you know, open for that. So apparently you can, if you want to purchase pottery from people out of their homes, there's there's some places that you can do that along the, along the route. And would you say that Jemez has its unique style? Like the other oh, pueblos? Oh, yeah, absolutely. They all do. And um, we passed Zia on the way in as well. So and Zia has their own style. So each one has their own style for their pottery uh, that when you see it enough times, you begin to recognize, oh, that's from Acoma, or that's from Zia, or that's from Santa Domingo. So, yeah. 
So the visitor center, we can go into the visitor center, we can uh, video record in all of it except the museum. So we, we will go through the museum without recording it, uh, but we'll tell you more about it when we get back out and, uh, and uh, tell you whether or not it's worth visiting. But uh, we don't want to hurt our chances of getting a lot of material uh, uh, without at least looking at the museum. Yeah. Okay? Are you recording? Yes. Oh, did you see the porno? I thought we'd go over here to the outside. There seems to be some things over here. All right. We have Red Rock Trail passes inside. So they have a little uh, display set up outdoors. I wonder if this counts as museum. Eh, no. I don't think if it's outdoors, no. Yeah. <laughs> I think these are recreations. So there's a little path we can follow. They got uh, their little garden growing here. You see it? The garden. Oh growing? yeah. I'm sure they've planted their corn and they're gonna plant their beans and squash. I want to get a picture of this little house, but there's a lady uh, in front of me taking pictures. It's a replica of a prehistoric Hemis field house. Used as seasonal homes during warmer weather, hundreds of field houses were built by our people in strategic locations near fields, springs, and hunting areas. Winter has spent, a oh, winter was spent in the nearby giant pueblos. Aha! So they were close to their fields and crops when they, so they could uh, work all day long and take rest as they needed to. I don't know if we can get anything inside. Let's see the light. There's enough light. So you can see it's made of mud and grass and, and hay. rocks. Yeah. And then uh, it has a frame of vigas. vigas and lentillas. And rocks on the edges to keep it from wearing. Very nice. And sticks on top. Can we go around to the other side? Oh, and a snake. It just ran away from us because it was scared. Because it's a little it? tiny snake. He's afraid of you. Yeah, He's... I know. <laughs> I could tell. Because he ran off like lizards run off. Oh. He ran in here. Oh, there's another lizard there. I saw the snake go in there. And there's a little tiny lizard right there. We're not going to bother you. You can live there. Yeah, he's the same color as those gray rocks. There he goes. See him? Right there. You know what that is? A lizard. Oh, <laughs> I thought you were talking about the rock. Where's the lizard? Right on the rock. Between the oh, rock yeah, and okay, the Oh, yeah, okay, I see him. Uh, that's tough. That's volcanic tough. Oh, yeah. All of this. All right. Want to go in the visitor center? Yep. Excuse me. How's it going? Hi. Good. How are you today? Pretty good. Pretty good. You guys been here before? No, no. This is our first time. Oh, well, How long have you guys been here? Uh, we've been here for about. 20 years now. Oh, okay. Yeah, we recently uh, kind of reamped it. We have a coffee shop here, um, serving lattes, and then over here we have a museum that is free. So if you guys want to check that out. We do, yes. And we have a fish shop as well. Um, I was going to ask, I, I remember the last time I was up here, there were uh, sellers, food vendors. Yes. Uh, do they still come regularly? or yeah, do they, they do come regu regularly, but um, it's not on a scheduled basis. All right. So, um, it just depends what yeah, day. Yeah, what day it is, but um, when the, the summer starts rolling around, um, they'll definitely be coming out here almost weekly. Mm -hmm. yeah, if you guys have any questions, just let us know, okay? We're set. We visited the... Uh, Indian Market in Bernalillo yesterday. I know they're doing it again oh, today. Oh yeah, I didn't see that. I had an ad that wasn't right there. Yeah. Yeah. So they uh, 
Is there a specific type of pottery that is made in this yes. Pueblo um, area? One thing that a lot of people do here is uh, storytelling. So what it is, it's a mother in the middle, and she has all the yeah. kids. Yeah. Oh, um, right, yeah. right. Yeah, so those ones are we saw some of that yesterday. Yeah. So we saw we were uh, we saw several storytellers seed storage. So they had the little tiny mail. Do all storytellers do that, or just the ones that you uh, store? Just certain ones. Yes. Oh yeah, yeah. I didn't know why they had the little mail. And the, the uh, gentleman whose pottery it was said, oh, that's for seed storage. So anytime you see the little mouth, I, did, I didn't know that. <laughs> all right, we're going to take those pins before we leave, all right? Okay. We're going to stack up our, our purchases. We have, book, we have a stack as well. Oh, okay. Well, actually, we don't do the book, but yeah, we should. Oh. <laughs> we go everywhere. Yeah, go ahead and check, look around, let us know if you have any questions. I'll be separate for you. Okay? Thank you. Are th these are all for sale? Yes, all of them are for sale, and we have more in the cabinet. And um, how, where are the prices? Prices are okay. See, there's one right there. Yeah. Okay, right here. This one's going for $4.70. This one is made by... Bonnie. Yeah. yeah. Oh, we saw somebody by that name yesterday at the, uh, the Bernalillo, yeah. We do have our artist list up here as well. I show different artists that we purchased from, and these are all from this uh, And then last week we went to um, the Gathering of Nations. Oh, wow, yeah, that one was a big event too. That one's very packed. There always brings millions. Coming. Yeah, yeah. We have a video up about it oh, on our channel. Too, yeah. How much are the small ones? The small ones, I believe, they start off around uh, 140. Do you want to pick a small storyteller for us? Oh, okay. Pick a one. I'll show you these ones. Those ones, I will say go for 140. This one right here is 130. Oh, I actually like her. Yeah, and there's two mm -hmm. different that artists one? on that one. What well. about the one with the... Um, Dress. Veil. This one right here? The one next to her. <clears throat> yes. This one's going to be about like a shawl she's wearing. Uh huh. Behind her. And then we got a pot that she's holding. And how much is that one? This one is going for 115 Check We'll take her. Okay. Sweet. I like the purple on this, to be honest. It should be pretty nice. So they have a, a nice variety of. We got drums. Yeah, handmade drums. I want one of the flat ones. Oh, you, well, maybe that's a different uh, style of from a different pueblo. I don't know. I'll have to ask. Lots of batteries. I'm gonna I'm gonna show you again. I just found this out yesterday, so I always wondered oh, what the little bells. pots. And I don't know if you can see it. Uh, the light doesn't let me do it. These little pots with the little tiny holes in them. I found out yesterday, and I'm sure many of you guys already know this, but I found out yesterday they call them uh, seed pots. So when you want to store your seeds and keep them away from the creatures, rats and mice and things like that, yeah, you store them in seeds. there. And I asked him, well, how do you get them out? And I said, you shake them. It sounds like something in their oh, room over there. Security or something. Uh, he said, you shake it. You shake the seeds out? Yeah. So that if you're planting, you're just shaking as you're walking? Yep. Oh, I like these. These are cool. It's pretty rings over here. So the reason I got us a storyteller uh, piece is because, as you guys may know, Shelly and I have started a new channel called Our Story, Your Story. And I'm going to take a picture of that and make it into our avatar. These are made here since they're... Made where? I don't know if these are made here or they just ship them in for something to sell. Hmm. But I like those. So, Fika, Sanatia, Cross, Fans. Handbags. So a nice selection. 
What do we got on clearance here? Big jewelry case over there. Oh, it's a scarf. A winter scarf or a summer scarf? Winter. <laughs> That's why it's on clearance. Oh, can I shoot it? Bookshelf. I have some of those books. A little place to sit down. And this is their Hummingbird Cafe. They serve coffee and those pastelitas. That's what I used to be able to buy when I stopped across the street with those little pastelitos. Beautiful mural. I need to get a still image of this. And a patio for Do you have eating when you get something at the hummingbird. Maybe we'll come back here to uh, maybe we'll come back here to have our picnic today. Very Southwestern style. With the big vines growing here. And that gives it shade. Let me see if I can get Shelly to hold the camera so I can get a couple of pictures out here. Hold this so I can get a photo of the mural. Please. Do what? Hold this so I can get a photo of the mural, please. Oh, okay. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. We've gotta do some business here because we bought some things, so we're gonna turn you off and we'll get back to you once we get back outside. <laughs> Might as well be in the shot. <laughs> All right, well, we just uh, spent some time at the Walatoa Visitor Center. We went through the gift shop and the museum took some photos, bought a few things, and uh, watched the video that they show, which is great because it tells you a lot about the history and the area and some of the flora and the fauna in the area and talks about the Red Rocks hike that you can go on. Um, and uh, so we learned a lot. So unfortunately we can't take photos or videos in the uh, museum, but I think one of the reasons that was okay is because we'd recommend that if you were coming up here and you wanted to le learn more about the history and the culture uh, of the Hemis area, the Hemis people, uh, you should go through the museum. It's very informative, lots of material, and take a couple of minutes to watch the video, although it always seems like it's going to be too long. Uh, watch it because you'll learn a lot. And uh, we're going to come back. We're probably going to schedule a trip on the Red Rocks Trail, which is two hours. We can't do it today, but we would like to do it just because it does have uh, they have tour guides. Uh, you're going to have tour guides do it for you. And so you get, you get a lot of information about the uh, natural history of the area. So strongly recommended. We're headed now up to the, uh, the uh, Pueblo, he Ruins. Pueblo Historic, New Mexico State Historic Site, right? Yes. We'll know uh, when we get there. So, yeah. <laughs> and uh, they've got a visitor center through too. So we'll uh, walk you through that and then we'll take you through the facility itself. Okay. Bye. Well, we're here at the Gisa Watoa. Uh, Boy, you did a better job than I did. Pueblo at Ancient Ruins. And we're going to go inside, check out the visitor center, and then we'll take a little tour of the ruins. Uh, as I said, it's free for New Mexico residents on the first Sunday of the month. So uh, that's why we chose today. Although Toby could come on a Wednesday because he's over 60 and get in free as well. Next year, I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> you can hardly wait. I oh, can hardly wait. 60. All the, all the benefits and perks of being 60. Being so. a, a senior citizen loved by all Americans. Yeah. And right over here on the side, they have uh, some people set up to sell some food. They have tons of bread, uh, loaves of bread. They have uh, enchiladas and... Navajo in, tacos. And Indian tacos. And, and uh, my favorite cherry. Chili and, Cherry pastelitos. Oh, yummer.
that's going like to be pie. A, that's going to be our dessert today. Yeah, looking forward to that after we finish the tour. All right, let's go in the visitor center see what they got. Oh, they do have apparently there's a flute making workshop going in. I'll ask permission to get a little bit. Thank you. So that was inside the visitor center and they were having a class um, on how to make a flute. And I don't know if you saw that last shot that I took, but it not only had the pieces of wood necessary to do it, but it had the uh, pocket knives. So he was actually going to teach uh, the people that signed up for the class how to make their own flute, which I think is just very cool. Giesawa. Giesawa was a thriving community for at least 200 years prior to the arrival of the Spanish. It was one of the largest and most impressive pueblos in the Jemez area. The pueblo is known to have extended under the present highway and beyond to the site of Villa or Villa Coeli. All that is left of the pueblo are these mounds of rock and dirt that mark the spot of the ancient homes. Hear all the birdies singing in the trees. It's funny how you can hear them, but you can't see them, huh? They have a trail camera hung up in that tree there. Hmm. Oh, we didn't get the pamphlet to tell us what we're seeing there. I guess those are the mounds where the homes were. So we do have our mm, our windscreens on our microphones, but it's a pretty stiff little wind, so. No photography allowed inside the Kiva. Fray Alonso de Benavides, 1630. This land and its inhabitants then, having been ever since God created them, subject to the demon and his slaves until this time, and all filled with estupas of idolatry, where they not only never adored the most holy name of Jesus, but did not even know it, is filled with churches and pedestals of crosses. So basically the Spanish came in and changed everything. And took away their religion. Because they didn't feel like these natives had uh, the right religion. So I would, uh, you're allowed to go down into the Kiva. This ladder will take you there, and that ladder will take you down. But they don't allow uh, photography or videography in the, v uh, the uh, Kiva. The and Kiva, so I'm not going to take you down there. It's pretty much a whole Besides, ground. Besides, we've seen the Kiva at uh, at uh, Pecos. Pecos, which they do allow you to go in and uh, take photography. And technically, all kivas are the uh, pretty much the same. Yeah. Because they're. Uh... So 
So they're religious edifices of the tribes. That looks like it carried water at some time. Tell me about it. San Jose de los Jemez. The first missionary assigned to the Jemez region was Fray Alonso de Lugo, who accompanied Oñate in the original Spanish settlement of New Mexico in 1598. It is not known whether, is it Fray or Father? Uh, they called him Fray. Fray. It is not known whether Fray Lugo or his immediate successor began the actual missionary work at G, what did I say, Giusawa? The accent's on the middle, middle syllable. Giusawa, Giusawa. Anyway, but two attempts Where is it? at... <laughs> But two attempts at Christianizing the Hemas Indians, 1601 and 1621 through 23, met with failure, probably through lack of adequate personnel. They didn't have enough whips and chains. Ouch. The Church of San Jose de los Hemas was founded by Fray Geronimo Zarate Salmaron in the winter of 1621 to 22. The church was seen today, the church as seen today, is constructed of sandstone with the exception of a few sections of adobe brick in and beneath the walls. The adobes suggest that an earlier church may have been constructed, or at least started, possibly by Fray Lugo. Or, since it's L-U-G-O, is it Lugo? Lugo. The ruins of this once imposing complex are testimony to the religious zeal of the 17th century Franciscans who were responsible for construction of most of the mission churches of the American Southwest. While living at San Jose de los Jemes, Fray Salmaron founded a second mission, San Diego de la Congregación, at the site of modern Jemes Pueblo. We're down in this beautiful Hemis Valley. We were trying to get uh, information on the geology of the area, but uh, the app that we use is on our phones and it doesn't, we can't get a single, a, a single, a signal. Well, I can check again now that we're a little bit higher forest, uh, instead of Pueblo. And we're just above the town of Hemis Springs. Ah, here we go. All right. Southern Rocky Mountains, Rocky Mountain System, Permian Era, which is 299 to 280 MA, million years ago. Million years ago. We got mud, mudstone is most of it. Then we got siltstone, shale, and lithology. I don't know what that's. And this is the Abo Formation, stratigraphic unit. So all of these layers that you see in the various colors are laid as a result of the uh, fact that it was under the water. And as the water dissipated, evaporated, or uh, however it left, uh, it left these sandstone and other stone, lime, it left it all behind. And that's how these mountains, mountains were formed. Picnic tables. Campo Santo, the Campo Santo or cemetery, was usually located in front of the mission church. The converts from Jisua, Jisawa, Jisua, 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 are buried here. The converts are buried here. Soviet converted from the uh, tribal religion to the Catholic religion. You get buried in the uh, cemetery. Read this while I take a walk around in there. All right. During the first decades of Spanish colonization in Mexico and South America, professional architects and engineers brought building knowledge to the new provinces. Such was not the case in 17th century New Mexico. No secular building experts entered this area among the colonists. 
The friars were left to their own devices. They relied upon their memories of the fine churches in Europe and Mexico and translated those memories to the soil of New Mexico. The mission church took on a new form influenced by the local materials available. Laborers who were untrained in massive construction and the friars' personal knowledge of architectural principles. The churches not only served as houses of worship, but were built with defensive measures in mind. The church door is 11 feet wide. This seems to have been a unit of measurement for the nave is about 33 feet in width and 110 feet in length. The nave. These barren walls were once plastered. Excavations have revealed that there were groups of murals which were executed al fresco, painted while the plaster was wet for penetration and permanence, are among the few found in any of the 17th century churches in the southwest. Boldly executed fleur de lis and other patterns were found as well as realistic Indian motifs in green, red, blue, yellow, black, and white. Along the walls are the remains of 12 pedestals, which most likely supported religious statuary. Other wall decorations would have included the 12 stations of the cross hung between the pedestals and other religious paintings. Hold it for a minute so I can change my camera. So what's interesting to me about all these stone built facilities is you never see doors. And you realize that the reason you don't see doors is they moved on the roofs and through holes in the roofs to get into uh, the room. And, uh, and I've always noticed that whenever we're around a, I'll show you. Whenever we were around a church, there's all these additional rooms that included places for the friars to live, eat, uh, sleep, keep their uh, domesticated animals. And you can understand why they'd want to be here. It sure is a pretty valley. And the Jemez people by this time were a combination of the Jemez and the people that had moved here from uh, Pecos. But see, here's a good example. So it's a living space. It has a fireplace in the corner over there. So you know it's a living space, but there's no door. And then you realize that the reason there's no door is because they came in through the roof and the roof was made with vigas and latillas and then dirt on top of that. And it was the first, if there was ever a fire, it was always the roofs, roofs, roofs that would go first. The roof. And the so roof. you're left with these. The roof is on fire. That's what they would say. <laughs> is that where the song comes from? Yeah. So this is for the friars, for their living space, their eating space, for keeping their lambs and sheep. And you could move around in these rooms. And they had windows as well. Lots of basalt 
and tough and all this material that you see here is actually from the uh, explosion that took place at the Bias Caldera. The courtyard. The rooms of the convento formed a courtyard or claustro. Such courts or patios are characteristic of Spanish and Mexican architecture and usually contain gardens. The rooms making up the claustro not only served as the friar's residence, but also housed workshops, storage rooms, kitchens, stables, and schoolrooms. Claustro, the cloister. And here's a tree that one day imagined it would walk, so it asked to have heels put on it. What? <laughs> I bet you there'd be a really interesting story as, as, as to why that's there. So we're not in buggy season, so we're not experiencing a lot of bugs and flies. There's some. So each one of those layers of color represents a layer of seabed. More tough, so that's volcanic tough right there, and that's volcanic uh, basalt. basalt. The tough comes from the cloud of dust that rolls down the side of the volcano and the basalt is the magma that traveled. Oh, that's a very... It's got some veins in it. Yeah, this little pile, pile here is a rock hound uh, delight. You can hear the water. Hear it over here. So you probably can't hear it on our microphones, but we can hear the hemis that runs down here. Actually, that's probably not the hemis. That could be. So it crosses the road. Let me see if I can get a shot of it over here. Well, don't fall down the hill. I didn't bring my walking stick, so I'm not going to get too close to the edge here. Why do you ever bring your walking stick? Why do you even have them? Well, they're in the truck. I mean, I didn't... Oh. Because so it's a paved path and you didn't think you'd need it. See it over there. And you can hear it over here. I think that's probably a side stream. The Hemis is bigger than that right now because of the spring runoff. More basalt, more tough. That's a prickly thistle there. So that hole that you see in the basalt was formed of a, as a result of gas being trapped in the magma uh, as it was flowing and the gas uh, stayed there. Sometimes if you dig inside of one of those little gassy holes, you'll find some fine minerals. Gassy holes. Uh, peridot and other gemstones. So it's not a big facility like uh, Pecos or some of the other locations we've been at. Maybe there's a better 
Let me get a better look at the river. Oh, there it is. Yeah, see, that's not the Hemis. That's just a side stream. It probably has its own name. But you can see it right down there. No fish in that. But maybe some gold, except that we're on a historic site, so we can't do that. Oh, this is interesting. So they made, they incorporated this big basalt boulder uh, into the making of this wall here. They just used the boulder that sat there as part of it. Well, yeah, of course. Why not? You're going to have a bunch of rocks built up. You better have the big ones at the bottom. Yeah, and they weren't rock hounds, right? So uh, they would pick up whatever rock was convenient, especially these flat ones. So that's got a little bit of agate in it. You see the basalt up here, of course, and the tuff. So anything would do. There's some more agate. And agate is uh, plentiful in this area. A lot of agate rock hounds come up here. Missionary efforts at Jisawa. Passing over this river, the Rio Grande, to the westward at seven leagues, one strikes the Jemez Nation, the which, when I came in as custodian, had been dissipated through all the kingdom and already almost depopulated by famine and wars, which were on the way to finish them off. There, the most part, were already baptized and had their churches by the travail of sundry religious. And so I promptly endeavored to reclaim it and to gather it again in the same province and place there a religious who attended it with care. And we have congregated the nation in two pueblos, that is, in the pueblo of San Jose, Jisawa, which is still standing with a very sumptuous and beautiful church and monastery, and in the Pueblo of San Diego of the congregation, the site of modern Hemes Pueblo, which for this purpose we founded new, bringing thither what Indians there were of that nation who were going about astray, likewise giving them a house and in it food for some days and plowed lands for their planting. For these and other like expenditures of charity, we religious are wont to barter even unto the sackcloth, which your majesty gives us in alms for our vesture. And so that congregation is today one of the best pueblos in the Indies, with its church and monastery and schools of all trades, as in the rest. And although more than half of this nation have died, your majesty has withal more than 3,000 tributaries congregated there. Fray Alonso de Benavides, 1630. I used to know a guy in high school whose name was Eddie Benavides. And uh, he was a good friend, but he was head of the Republicans. And so I was president of the Young Democrats, and he was president of the Young Republicans. Uh -huh. So we were never working on the same campaigns together. The Church of he San Jose became... de los Jemez Oops. was excavated in 1921 to 22. Additional excavation and repair work was completed by the Civilian Conservation Corps in the late 1930s. Portions of the facade were restored to include the reconstruction of the doorway. Materials used in this stabilization work and in later projects have been the same as used by the original builders, mud and stone. The above photograph was taken in 1921 when the excavation of the church had just begun. Let's go in the church and do an outro. Okay. And then let me take some pictures, okay? Okie doke. See if we can get out of the wind. Hi there. All right, so that was the historic site, Jisawa 
Gisela. 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 Anyway, we're probably saying it wrong. But it is in the National Forest, and you can come take a tour. Um, it's very nicely put together. And it's historic. A lot of history. And, and really beautiful surroundings. You've got to say this area is really pretty bit down here in the Valley of the Hemis. Um, so uh, they do have a very small visitor center. Um, if you're going to stop to buy things, better to stop to at Walatoa. There's nothing here to buy. Uh, but they do have very except friendly, the except the food. Yeah. Uh, but they do have really friendly people. And uh, there was one other thing I was going to say about it. Flute making class? Oh, the, well, yeah, but that was the flute. <laughs> oh, oh. Uh, first Sunday of every month is free for every uh, New Mexico residents. And every Wednesday or first Wednesday? I think. I think it's every Wednesday. Every for Wednesday seniors? is free to seniors over 60. Yeah. Okay. So uh, make a visit up here. Just another sense of, you know, how the Spanish interacted with the uh, Puebloan tribes uh, in this area. And sometimes it's a good story and sometimes it's not. But you learn uh, that the balance is somewhere, uh, well, in between, of course. All right. So we're going to go down to the little food thingy there and buy some cherry pastelitos and maybe a Indian loaf of taco. A loaf of bread to take us or maybe an Indian taco. We brought our own food today because we were going to picnic, but I don't know. How many, and then, how many times are you going to get to buy an Indian taco? Yeah, good point. <laughs> um, and then we're going to go look for some place to prospect for gold along the Hemis. And we're going to take that home for us. And you'll, if you watch Garage Prospecting, our other channel, you'll see the results of that there. Okay? Say bye. Bye.